Earlier, we saw how the crew aboard the Apollo Command Module performed a maneuver to extract the lunar module from the S-4B before both spacecraft and spent rocket continued on separate trajectories to rendezvous with the moon. Now we will see how the slightest of changes to the official mission profile allowed the crew to remain in the safety of a low Earth orbit while NASA convinced the world they had landed on the moon. Though Apollo 8 was billed as the first manned mission to the moon, it was nothing more than a proof of concept to see if the people at Houston could be taken in by NASA's trickery. And these are the men who will make this historic voyage to the moon, the crew of Apollo 8. They are in if Houston could be taken in, so could the networks. And if the networks could be taken in, so could the world. It helped that this was a first the media didn't know what to expect. And though the world was in awe at the photos and movies taken by the first humans far enough away from our planet to see it in full, they were in fact no better than what had already been achieved with satellites and robotic spacecraft, which is all they were. For while the crew of Apollo 8 remained in a low Earth orbit, it was the unmanned S-4B that relayed images and broadcast live TV of the planet. Except it didn't go exactly to plan. Though NASA was able to recover static images in the same way they had during the earlier orbiter and surveyor programs, for some reason the live TV broadcast failed part way into the mission, which is why the crew of Apollo 8 had to improvise with the light bulb on a stick routine and NASA Studios had nothing more to offer than a camera moving over still images of the Earth. Next up was Apollo 10, which NASA promoted as a dry run for a full lunar landing. It was in fact further proof of concept, this time to prove it possible to soft land the lunar descent stage on the Moon under remote control. Though the official mission profile showed the command, service and lunar modules being sent to orbit the moon where the crew would perform manoeuvres to separate and dock without actually landing on the surface. Just like Apollo 8, they too remained in the safety of a low Earth orbit. While on the face of it, NASA would have you believe that the entire lunar module was extracted from the S-4B. In truth, only the lunar ascent stage was required to fulfill that part of the mission where the crew is seen entering the lunar module. That uh, starting uh, upright in the command module and uh, heading down in Aquarius. Uh... The lunar descent stage remained inside the S-4B, which was used to ferry it to the moon. NASA would then attempt to land it remotely as they had already succeeded in doing four times with the Surveyor robotic spacecraft. Television cameras took us live and close up to the lunar surface. Our spacecraft landed softly in the lunar seas. They examined the moon's color and sampled its chemical composition. a sunset on the surface of the moon, saw the sun eclipsed by the earth, and looked back at his own planet a quarter of a million miles away. There is absolutely no other reason why NASA would need to send the spent S-4B stage on this course rather than allowing it to burn up in the earth's atmosphere. And given their near identical translunar trajectories, the S-4B was also a perfect substitute for the command module when it came to tracking a spacecraft that was relaying communications.
At some point, the lunar ascent stage was undocked from the command module and its thruster used to send it on a collision course with the moon. And on completion of the mission, the command module separated and returned the crew to Earth while the service module was left to disintegrate in the Earth's atmosphere. With the exception of Apollo 8, whose payload was a stripped down lunar test module, this profile would guarantee the success of any subsequent Apollo mission to the moon after Apollo 10. Had their plan failed, you can be sure there would have been some excuse to delay the next mission. But as it stands, on May 23rd, 1969, the stage was set, quite literally, for NASA to claim one of their astronauts had set foot on the moon just 59 days after they succeeded in remotely placing Apollo 10's descent stage on the lunar surface in the Sea of Tranquility, the landing site of Apollo 11. Stand by for T1. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. And the space race took on a completely different aspect.